Alright. Let's go get started moving our bolts. Get the torque converter flex plate and the cover off. This one's a little tricky. You gotta remove the O2 sensor. I guess you don't have to, but it just makes it easier. Now, we'll move on to our starter removal. Is a 14 millimeter. Obviously, the battery's disconnected. Just gonna take this clip, kind of pull it apart, get your transmission lines out of the way. So you have one facing towards the back of the Jeep, and the other one's on the back side facing the front. So what I do kind of break that first one loose since that's the easiest one to get to get the other one hiding up here all right guys kind of lied to you a little bit here forgot the front one the 14 millimeter and there's two back ones. Uh, I was mistaken. There's only the two, but there's three total. So this middle one is a 15 millimeter. Top one is a 16. The best way to approach this is with a, a swivel. You alright, Elliot? Oh, I'm chilling, yeah. This came off real quick. Okay. Elliot's working on his Jeep. Most of the oil is in the, in the little pan thing. Well, that's good. facing towards the front of the Jeep, one facing towards the back. And our 14 millimeter socket. By allowing or pulling the starter though, allow way better access to pulling that oil pan, which is a trick. In itself. So you just kind of move these lines out of the way a little bit. Little more starter. That's it. And there is our starter. Alright, well, before we move the oil pan, we need to do the flex plate cover, torque converter, inspection plate, whatever you like to call it. So we'll crawl back underneath here. So to recap, you have the two large bolts on the outer side, and you have one, two, those are half. So this is a two piece, so this one slides out. 
it has a lip on it. it slides over this. This is your main engine, basically the engine plate. That part does not come off unless you're removing the transmission or the engine. So just kind of slide that away. Try not to bend it. There you go. And there is our our flex plate. I mean, this is a automatic transmission. There's different sizes to this oil pump pan. Oh, I keep saying pump pan. These are seven sixteenths. Okay, so all the way around. Um, Pretty much on each side of the rail, 716 is towards the front. I believe those are half, but we'll get to those up here. These are kind of a trick to get to. I think these are half as well, or if these were 716, there's a rubber piece that goes on the bottom towards the back here. It's kind of a trick to get to, especially if it's full of gunk. These are slightly bigger, so I believe those were a half inch. Okay, guys. So back here at the back of the engine, you have two bolts. Way up here, you got one on here and one over here. Those are half inch. This is a rubber. Um, it's not even really a gasket. It's just to put pressure on the other uh, inspection plate. So those are half. You do have to kind of push past it with the socket to engage the bolt. And so we'll go ahead and get started here. Put this down. You guys probably won't be able to see a whole lot. And that whole rubber piece will come out. And that is it. So it just seals just on the lip of the bottom of the oil pan. This is a new piece put on a few years ago when I did the remain seal. We'll just clean this up with some soap. It is in, still in good shape. The old one that I took out originally. Was completely thrashed. Okay, so now moving on, let's go ahead and tackle the pan. So, typically, for me, what I like to do is start going around, break them loose. Go ahead and get the camera repositioned here. You guys get a better view. All right, we're on the home stretch. And this is probably one of the most irritating portions to do when removing the oil pump and the pan. So you have two bolts, you 
one up here that's a half inch and the other one back here trick once your jeep is lifted is you're gonna have to take this pump loose drop it in one now there. let the pump fall down in the pan. too. Now the fun part. Actually, put your dipstick up. Hopefully, put it in the room. Bad. Right. So basically, like I said, you're going to have to turn the pan towards the passenger side with a kick down. It's kind of a brief run down here. So obviously we're at the front of the Jeep right now. The pan sits here. Drop the pump. comes down. You can try to remove that or just leave it in the pan. Have the back of the pan tilted down and then you have to go tilt the front of the pan towards the driver's side. Comes out, comes at an angle. Again, don't rush it. You don't want to bend the pan all up. That's what you get. You get the whole thing. Biggest thing, try to get the Jeep jacked up as high as possible. This thing is still stock, so it doesn't really have the ground clearance. Again, if you have a lift on it, you it's probably even easier. Um, with transmission lines, kind of have to move these around a little bit, but just take your time with it. It will eventually come out. So bottom end actually looks pretty good still. My biggest fear is right there. Oof. That cam gear. Zoom in a little bit. Oof, that looks a little rough. And that thing uh, decided to munch the synchronizer gear. That does look pretty bad. Great. Well, who knows? We'll see. If it looks a little chewed up though. There it is. Get you in focus here. Basically, as the engine rotates, that cam you know obviously rotates, but the synchronizer gear runs off of that and then it plugs into the bottom. The cam synchronizer gear plugs right into the shaft of the oil pump. So the camshaft turns, turns the synchronizer should be clockwise, turns the pump, thus giving us oil pressure. Hopefully that is not destroyed. So if 
so we're in major trouble, even more so. There's it on the camera, there it is. So we'll see, I don't know actually how much gear is actually left on that guy. I know you guys can't see. So yeah, I don't know, I definitely can see the shavings though, you can see it. It's obviously what you do not want in your engine, so it's bad news. Metallic shavings, never a good sign. Oh. Yeah, we'll just have to, your synchronizer gear comes up through here where I have this towel comes in from the top. So at this point, I'll drop the new one in there, see what the mesh pattern looks like. But hopefully there's enough on there. Oof, yeah, I don't know. That looks pretty rough. Um, the other thing too, guys, this is the gasket for the oil pump. Make sure you get a new one. This pump on here, and the existing one. This one's probably about two and a half years old. Replace that, that's a milling high volume. Going back with a standard, but at this point, who knows? It looks like pulling this whole engine out, but we'll see. So here we are. Finally got the oil pan off. And to confirm my worst fears, we have nothing but shavings throughout. The cam's absolutely destroyed. Um, probably see here a little bit. This is all pieces from the cam. And probably off the camshaft synchronizer. Just metal flakes throughout. So we're pretty much a stopping point on this little excursion today or for a while anyway slightly disheartening but it is what it is I guess so anyway the oil pump that is the old well, actually it's fairly new but it's the Melling high volume it didn't appear to have any shavings on the pickup screen the pump rotates perfectly fine. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this unit. So again, I have no idea why that thing shredded. The only thing I can think of is, here's our synchronizer. Is this thing has quite a bit of play in it. So I don't know if it starved for oil or just was worn out, but Again, as you can see, it completely shredded that. It also killed the cam gear. So, yeah, we'll uh, wind up doing a full rebuild on this one. Just add it to my collection of junk. Anyway, guys, appreciate you watching. See ya.